At some point in time, I know you have used elementary OS and were really amazed by it. You thought it was a stunning Linux distro and everything about it was super polished. I also know it's not your current operating system. Why is that? Defaults. Defaults are very important in a Linux distribution. How a distro looks out of the box, what software and tools does it come with, what's the default browser? Yeah, it matters. For example, a Linux distro came with NVIDIA proprietary drivers installed and configured by default out of the box when no other distribution did it. PopOS is a big name today. What it did was, it solved a problem. Now a distro did something else entirely. It stripped away automatic NVIDIA driver installation which was there in the first place. This is not problem solving. It created problems that were not there and didn't need creating. It removed access to a huge library of well-tested, stable, fast packages which was already there, it created a problem that didn't need creating. It chose to use only flat packs, but not the ones that are already there, but completely new apps created only for itself. It created a problem. Hey, this is Linux Techs, and today we are talking elementary OS. Check out my course Linux Mastery Express, which is the fastest way to level up your Linux skills. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the V-Editor and master shell scripting with real examples. After teaching more than a hundred students in person, I've curated the top things that will level up your Linux knowledge the fastest. The things that will make the most difference. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux mastery right now. Elementary OS 7 Horus, which came out early this year, was based on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS and came out with many iterative improvements. With this big release, Elementary OS brought the same great old experience that its users fell in love with. It also brought the same old inconveniences. Yeah, let's call them inconveniences. Right out of the box, the desktop looks super premium, no arguments here. But pressing the Windows button doesn't bring out the application menu. Instead, we get the shortcuts. No issue, it can be changed from the settings. I would have liked it if this was the default and shortcut messages on holding down the super key. Let me open an application and if I want to minimize it, there is no minimize button. Ok, this is an issue as I have multiple apps open at the same time and I need to minimize apps to focus properly. Maybe I can change this from the settings, apparently not. And the available window controls are placed on the opposite sides here. Not the most intuitive thing here, while I can get used to this, I don't understand the developer's vision here. Anyway, can I change this from the settings? You guessed it, no. But there must be a way I can fix these things. Let me go online and check for a solution. Where's Firefox? Oh, we get Epiphany Web Browser or GNOME Web here. Just fantastic. While Epiphany is not a bad browser, it's not a good browser either. Only recently has it become capable of playing YouTube videos properly. Yeah. Epiphany is slow, janky and overall is not an enjoyable experience. With the latest version, there have been many improvements and we can even use extensions now. But there are way better alternatives. But Elementary chose Epiphany. Alright, let's move on and install some other browser. Firefox maybe? Okay, Chromium? Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu LTS version. Many popular Linux distros like Linux Mint, Zorin OS and Pop OS are based on Ubuntu. And one of the biggest advantages of being based on Ubuntu is access to more than 60,000 well-tested packages. You can install pretty much any software you want from these repositories and it's a great experience altogether. Elementary OS with the last version, that is version 6, removed access to these packages from its app center. Let that sink in. Instead, Elementary OS chose to go with flat packs only. Personally, I was not a big fan of this decision. I understand the scope of unified package managers like Flatpak and Snap and I've had great experience because of these. I use a few, but at the end of the day, I prefer to use full native packages like .debs or RPMs. They are faster, they take up way less storage space and they integrate nicely with the system. So I was a bit down about the decision to ship only flat packs. Whatever, Flatup has a great library of apps and whatever you want, you can find there. Yeah, this is not that kind of video bruh. This is not a love story. This is a horror story. Elementary OS uses flat packs, but not the ones from Flatup. Elementary OS provides its own curated library of apps. You can't find any apps that anybody realistically uses here. There's no browser, there are no popular apps. One thing about the apps that are available here though. These apps are curated and specially made for Elementary OS. 
They are made by individual developers and look and integrate amazingly with Element OS. As an aspiring indie developer myself, I have massive respect for these developers and what Element OS try to do here. Really, take a bow. But as a user, I need the VLC Media Player, I need Firefox, Kden Live, some games and many more software. Realistically, alternatives for all these apps cannot be created only for Elementary OS. The software choice path that Elementary OS takes, this can be off-putting for many and a big hurdle for Linux newcomers. All these things combined with few more issues like overcomplicated NVIDIA driver installation made what could have been a great experience a plain inconvenience. I recently did a poll and these were the results. I know what you might be saying. Hey Tex, this sounds like a terribly bad Linux distribution. Does anybody even use Element OS? Yeah, here's the twist though. Element OS started off as one of the biggest sensational hits the Linux world had seen. It was accepted with open arms by the community and really adored. Elementary's Pantheon desktop was a smashing success. This was during the days of GNOME 3 and Plasma 4 series. Pantheon was aesthetic, polished and provided a premium experience. It was also minimal and people really took a shine to it. And before we knew it, Elementary had established itself as a top distro. When I talk about the polish, the attention to details and the workflow, Pantheon was better than the competition. Even today, Pantheon desktop holds up on its own. The dark mode that Elementary OS brought in the last version, which was a suggestive dark mode instead of a forced one. It was the inspiration for what we have in GNOME across all Linux distributions today. It was Elementary that brought about the change in how we see themes in Linux. The odd window controls, the lack of a minimize button and few other things were considered too minor for what we are getting. But of course, the software situation was very different on Elementary then. Apps from Ubuntu repositories were fully accessible in App Center. That means Firefox, Chromium, VLC, games, development tools, everything was fully accessible and could be installed with a single click. And App Center, Elementary's own software store was miles ahead of GNOME software store and even KD's Discover when it came out. It looked premium, had an enjoyable software browsing experience and was simply cool. It also has motivated other software stores and up the game. All these reasons kicked off a great journey for Elementary OS and it was all the hype. It was in a league of its own and people were hopping to it in droves. Even Windows users jumped into the Linux ship because of Elementary OS. Elementary OS garnered itself a huge community of loyal users. Elementary OS also has a sustainable financial model. Pay what you want for Elementary OS and the software created by developers specially for Elementary. While a price is suggested, you can just type in what you want to pay, including zero and access the software. This is particularly very very important. With this model, many developers started creating software for Elementary. Indie developers had a viable and sustainable way to create and maintain software with Elementary OS. And the users who could and wanted to support these developers now could. And those who didn't want to or couldn't, no harm done. You could still go ahead and download the software by typing in a zero in the box. Elementary OS also created the guidelines on how to create the applications with its human interface guidelines. This made all these new apps integrate so beautifully with Elementary. They looked like they were system apps. They belonged there. And this solved the inconsistency issue with other Linux apps. GNOME's new GTK4 and LibAdvaita work very similarly to make apps look and feel more uniform. Elementary leveled up the experience you could expect from a Linux distro. Many people call Elementary the Mac OS of Linux world. They are not wrong. A super premium desktop, high quality, consistency, and that superior polish in all apps, even the ones created by third-party developers, make Elementary OS stand out. And it also has a sustainable financial model that's going to work for everybody. Desktop Linux really needed something like Elementary, and Elementary did grow Desktop Linux as a whole. I've seen many people ask, why are there so many Linux distros? Couldn't everybody just work on one Linux distro? Apart from the obvious choice that all these distros provide to the users, all these distros competing against each other leads to everybody growing together. That's the beauty of open source. One advancement in one distro can be easily incultivated in other distros and with even better improvements. And Elementary OS will go down in history as one of the key accelerating factors of desktop Linux. Is Elementary OS a walled garden like Mac OS? Before we answer that, Desktop Linux desperately needs a distro that instead of letting the users decide everything, tells the users how to do everything. Yeah, Arch Linux is great, but Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distro because it gives us sane defaults out of the box, at least for Linux newcomers. Once they get an understanding of how things work in Linux and become intermediate or advanced users, they'll change their systems however they want. 
Linux is Linux, you have that freedom. But we do need a good starting point. But things didn't go all smooth for elementary OS. In recent years, it had some financial issues and there was also disagreement between the founding team. We are not going to get too much into what happened, but the original team split up. I personally could deal with all the choices that elementary OS developers made in its design as the final experience was too good to pass on. And as a software developer myself, I understand that the developers have a vision of how they want the users to experience the product. They want the users to experience only good things, so they have to have that control over certain things like what drivers are supported and what kind of apps are available. I get it. But I couldn't deal with the software situation here. This app center doesn't have a single app that I use. So is elementary OS dead? No. Is it less appealing to new users today? Yes. A big yes. Elementary OS developers are following their own vision, but they haven't taken away your freedom to use elementary OS the way you want to use it. And most of the inconvenience that we spoke about can be solved if you know how to. And if you don't know how to, Linux Techs at your service. Firstly, let's see how to solve the software issue here. Elementary developers have actually made it easy to get around the limitation. All you have to do is install one application from Flathub and all the apps in Flathub will be automatically populated here in App Center. Now Flathub is the largest library of modern Flatpak apps. You literally find anything there. Let's go ahead and see how to actually do that. Open the browser here and head over to flathub.org. Here, pick any app that you want to install. It can be any app. I'm going to go with Firefox browser. Click on install and open the downloaded file. This will launch the installer. It'll take a few minutes to get the details. Once it is done, click I understand and click on install anyway. This is standard warning that you're installing an app from outside source which cannot be reviewed by elementary. But Flathub is a trusted source so you can install it. Give it some time. Once it's done, you'll find Firefox in your app menu and your app center will be populated with thousands of amazing apps across all categories. Now you'll be able to find and install anything you want directly from the app center here. Now the software choice here widens exponentially and you can get the software that you use. Development tools, games, daily use software, Everything is available here. Before this, we couldn't even install an office suit. Let that sink in. While flat packs are cool and they have their advantages, they have their disadvantages as well. Firstly, they take up huge amount of storage space. Then they are slow to launch. If you are still using a hard disk drive, then app launch times will be noticeably longer. You can still go ahead and install apps from the Ubuntu repositories. You can use the apt command to install software. Open the terminal from menu. First, run sudo apt update. Then sudo apt install followed by the package name and app will get that software for you. But if you don't enjoy using the terminal, then you can install the Synaptic Package Manager, which is one of the most advanced graphical software managers there is. With Synaptic, installing and managing software from Ubuntu repositories will be vastly simplified here. Highly recommend it. You can install Synaptic by opening the terminal and running sudo apt install Synaptic. Synaptic Package Manager might look dated, but it's a very potent software manager with access to more than 68,000 packages. You can use it to install any software you want in .deb versions. You can also browse around for software here, and it even gives you advanced controls. This is a must-have for any Ubuntu-based distribution. Alright, moving on, let's fix the window control situation here now. I mean, you absolutely need the minimize button. Maybe when you are watching a video and somebody walks in the room, muscle memory kicks in and you go for that minimize button. There's no minimize button here. Yeah. For this we will install an additional module in the settings called tweaks which will give you a little more control over Pantheon desktop here. Let's start off by adding the software properties common package which adds in some package management features from Ubuntu which are stripped away here. You can copy the commands from the description below. Then let's add a new repository. Then let's install Pantheon tweaks. Once installation finishes, you can find this in system settings. There are a few options here, but we are interested in the Windows control layout section. Here you can find many options, but the one that most people will resonate with is the Windows option. This gives you that minimize button, although it looks different here, and all your controls are organized on the same side, like they ought to be. Next, let's have a look at how to get the GPU drivers working here to get maximum performance. For NVIDIA, there are multiple options, but let's go with the simplest here. Now I highly recommend that you have a time shift backup before you do this. Obviously, installing this driver is not officially endorsed on elementary. That's why the option is not available. 
and elementary OS users an older, more tested kernel and the newest NVIDIA drivers will probably not work here, leaving you unable to log into your system. So this step is only for advanced users who have a reliable timeshift backup setup. Proceed with this step at your own risk. First, let's update the system and reboot. Once that's done, let's go ahead and get the kernel headers. Then let's install the driver. Since on elementary, we are still on kernel version 5.15, I'm going to install a slightly older version as I know that the latest driver will give me some problems. Once done, reboot and you should be done. You'll see smoother animations and better responsiveness throughout the system. Installing the NVIDIA proprietary drivers really makes a difference in performance on elementary OS. If something goes wrong, live boot into an elementary OS session using a USB stick, install timeshift there and use it to roll back to a working backup. For Intel integrated and AMD GPUs, elementary OS comes preloaded with the driver, so you'll be getting the best possible performance out of the box. There you have it. We have solved all the inconveniences that elementary brings and have successfully revived elementary OS for you. While Linux GUIs have evolved significantly, the terminal gives you powers that some might consider too powerful. The terminal allows you to communicate directly with the kernel and gives you full control over your system. So having a good knowledge of Linux commands can change the game for you and make your Linux experience truly limitless. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux knowledge and get a deep understanding of Linux commands fast, I invite you to check out my express course Linux Mastery which I've designed to teach you working with Linux commands using the V editor and shell scripting in a very short amount of time. So if you have found this video valuable and like my style of on point explanation, check out Linux Mastery Express right now and take your Linux skills to the next level. Alright, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and leave me a big thumbs up. Next up, check out 2023's hottest Linux distros that you absolutely cannot miss. This is Linux Techs, signing out.